The square root in the number go to action makes it difficult to quantize it. There is another way of rewriting the action, and this other action is called the Polyakov action. Let me write it down. So the Polyakov action, and uh, this action has the benefit of eliminating the square root. In particular, let me write it down. So we will also show that this is, a, in some sense, equivalent, quote unquote, equivalent, in some respects, to the number go to action. This is equal to minus one over four pi alpha prime. Remember that one over four pi alpha prime is what we also called t in the previous lectures. And then here we have an integral d squared sigma. Then we have the square root of the deter minus the determinant of a field of a matrix, and that matrix is a, the matrix G mu nu, so this is a tensor. And here by G, I simply mean the determinant of G mu nu. So this is a new field that we have introduced that we didn't have previously. And this is not, let's say, the same as era mu nu. So this is the Lorentz metric. Whereas this is some field that we have introduced here in this action, and I will say more about this. Then we have G alpha beta with upper indices. So it is related to the inverse of this uh, matrix or tensor. And then we have D alpha x mu, D beta x nu. And then we also have the Lorentz metric era mu nu here. And remember that this operator here, this derivative operator is d over d sigma alpha. Remember that. Now, this is the Polyakov action, as I said. And uh, notice that this action is a function of the field g alpha beta, and it depends on the derivatives d alpha x mu. So it does not depend, for example, on the coordinates x mu directly, so it depends on the derivatives of the coordinates, and it does not depend on the derivatives of uh, g alpha beta. So it only depends on these two different fields that we will consider independent of each other, and then by varying each of these fields independently, so we vary them independently, we can find out and we can find out the equations of motions. So let's start first by varying this derivative here. So if we vary that derivative, let's see what kind of equation of motion we can get from there. Remember that in this case the equation of motion is d lambda dl d d lambda x gamma, so it can be written like this, and this is equal to zero, because the derivative of the Lagrange with respect to the coordinates is zero, since the action does not depend directly on these coordinates, right? And I have called L here, so this is the Lagrangian, and it is simply equal to this function here, and if you want, you can multiply it by this constant. Okay, so if we want to write down this equation of motion, we have to take that derivative. So we have d lambda, then here we have the square root of minus g, because this derivative here does not act on this field, the g field, so the, the metric g alpha beta. So we also have g alpha beta here, and then we have to take the derivative with respect to d lambda x gamma, of d alpha x mu d beta x nu and then out of the of the derivative we have era mu nu which is a constant uh, tensor so it is the Lorentz metric made up only of ones and minus ones right so we have to take the derivative of this basically and then we have to set this equal to zero it's not complicated to carry out that derivative. So here we have d lambda, then we have square root of minus g, g alpha beta, then we have 
delta. This is the Kronecker delta lambda alpha. So with an upper lambda and a lower alpha. If you recall also from uh, special and general relativity, this can also be written as era lambda alpha. It's exactly the same. Okay. Then we have delta mu gamma d beta x nu. So I have first taken the derivative of this term and this derivative will give me one only if alpha is equal to lambda. That's why we have this uh, Kronecker delta here. And then we must have mu equal to gamma. So that's why we also have this delta. And then we multiply it by this uh, term, which is undifferentiated. So this, this was not differentiated. So we have it here. And then we have plus d alpha x mu. And then here we have a, we have a bunch of Dirac, um, sorry, sorry, Kronecker deltas. So delta lambda mu, delta nu gamma. And then we have era minu here and set it equal to zero. Now you can check quite easily that this term and this term, they are equal. And you can play around with uh, the indices and you can write down the following equation. D lambda square root of minus G, G alpha beta. And then we have D beta X mu equal to zero. So this is the equation of motion written by varying the derivative. Then we can find another equation of motion by varying the metric here, G alpha beta. So this is another field that we want to vary. And let me also tell you first that you can see that this equation of motion here is equivalent to the Nambu Goto action, except that now we have the field G alpha beta, which is an independent variable, and it is it will be fixed by its own equation of motion that we have to find. But apart from that, this equation here looks very similar to the equation of motion that we found for the number go to action. So let me remind you. So we'll put it in brackets here. So we have we had d alpha. So in this case, I will change the indices, but never mind. So we have d alpha. Then we have the square root of minus gamma. And then we have gamma alpha beta d beta x mu. So you can see that, so this is equal to zero. And you can see that the two equations have the same form. So in here, I have gamma. In here, I have g. Now, if we vary, so we, have, we want to use this action here. But in this case, we are going to vary only the field g alpha beta. And I'm not going to do all the steps. You have to remember that the variation, so the, in this case, the variation will act on the square root of minus g, and it will also act on g alpha beta. So you can see that the variation in this case will only act on these two terms. You have to remember that the variation of the square root of minus g can also be written as minus one half square root of minus g, g alpha beta, dg alpha beta, which can also be written as plus one half square root of minus g, g alpha beta with upper indices, and dg alpha beta with the lower indices. So the variation of the action in this case will look like this. We have ds equal to minus. The constant, we can write it as t. Then we have a factor of uh, 2 here in the denominator. So actually here at the beginning, this capital, what we call previously capital T, is not exactly equal to this constant. So we should put T over 2 here, because we also define T as 1 over 2 pi alpha prime. So I mean, this is just a constant, and it's not really too important here. but just for the sake of convenience, let me tell you that this constant is not exactly t, but is t over 2. Then, here we have integral d squared sigma 
delta g alpha beta, and then we have the square root of minus g d alpha x mu d beta x nu minus one half. Then we have the square root of minus g g alpha beta g rho sigma d rho x mu d sigma x nu eta mu nu and we have to set it equal to zero like this so let me check that i have written it properly it seems like it and from here you just have to set this term equal to zero because all these variations are independent of each other and what you're going to get is a simple equation for the field g alpha beta so you will get g alpha beta equal to you can write it in the following form so we have two times a function that depends on the variable sigma so in this case i mean sigma alpha so this will be a function of what we previously called sigma and tau so it does not only depend on this scalar sigma but i'm going to write it like this just for the sake of convenience it is just shorthand and then i will also tell you what this function f is here we have d alpha x dot product let me write it um, in this form dot product d beta x let me tell you that by this dot product here, I simply mean d alpha x mu, d beta x nu, and then I have eta mu nu. Whereas on the other hand, we also have the function f of sigma. So f of sigma is defined as one over g rho sigma d rho x dot product d sigma x like this so we could have also defined f in this form so f of sigma to the minus one or simply f to the minus one equal to this simple as that so we have g rho sigma d rho x dot product d sigma x now we see that the field g alpha beta defined by this equation here is not exactly the same as the metric gamma alpha beta that we defined in previous lectures. This is also called the pullback. And uh, we defined it previously. It is quite similar though, because uh, this uh, dot product also appears in the definition for gamma alpha beta. So if you recall, gamma alpha beta can be defined like this d alpha x dot product d beta x simply like this so you can see that g alpha beta is very similar to gamma alpha beta they are proportional indeed but we have this f which uh, makes g alpha beta and uh, gamma alpha beta different from each other however this doesn't really matter why well because rather remarkably f this uh, function f drops out of the equation of motion that we wrote here why does f drop out well because you can see that we have the square root of minus g and here we have g alpha beta and the square root of minus g will scale as f so it will be proportional to f whereas the inverse so this is the inverse g alpha beta it will scale as f inverse like this so when you multiply these two you have f times f to the minus one which will give you one right so indeed these two equations are exactly equivalent to each other right and we therefore see that the number go to action and the polyakov action will result in the same equation of motion for x we can see that g alpha beta is indeed equal to 2f this coefficient f and then we have gamma alpha beta so this is the exact definition 
And we will investigate this uh, further. In, in particular, we are also interested in the symmetries of the polyacov action.